Today, I'm going to start a two-part message, but this is going to be part one of the message, and I've titled it, Working with the New. Working with the New. What do you do when God gives you something new? When God brings a new word your way, new life, new opportunity, new knowledge, new experience, how do you work with it in your life? How do you make it work in your life? Working with the new, part one. And my text is going to be from Luke chapter 5, verse 36. And we're going to examine a parable of Jesus. And we're going to learn some lessons from that parable of Jesus. It teaches us what to do with a new thing. Luke chapter 5, verse 36. And we read, Then he spoke a parable to them. No one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise, the new makes a tear, and also the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. It is a parable of Jesus that is repeated in the other Gospels, and the concept is very clear. Jesus is talking about the old and the new, and the background to this is that the disciples, or the people, the Pharisees came asking Jesus questions. And they said to Jesus, why is it that the Pharisees fast and the disciples of, Jesus, of John fast, but your disciples do not fast? And so Jesus is responding to that. Now remember that in the parable or in the sermon on the Matthew chapter 6, Jesus had talked about the fasting of the Pharisees, and he had actually said that his disciples should not fast like that. Because he said when the Pharisees fast, they march in the market with their long faces. And everybody knows that these people are deep in the spirit, very sanctimonious. And, and they don't clothe themselves well because they fast to impress people. And so people saw the Pharisees as spiritual people, but it was all a show off. And Jesus said to his disciples, you will fast, but you will not fast like the Pharisees. So when they came asking Jesus the question, why don't your disciples fast like the Pharisees, he's now going to answer why they should not do that. And the answer is this parable. He says, no one, no one, and I like how he says no one, no one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise, the new makes a tear, and also the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. Sometimes when you hear the answers of Jesus, you wonder, what is he saying? Did he miss the question? Because that's not how most of us will have answered such a question. So Jesus is using a parable to answer this important question. And we're going to learn some great lessons from it. A parable normally uses natural things to teach spiritual things. So it uses a natural occurrence, something that happens naturally, and then it helps us to see how it applies spiritually. So in this parable, Jesus talks about two things. The first thing he talks about is old garment. An old garment is something that is weak and that is worn out. Now, you have to understand that the days of Jesus is not like our days. Now, most of you have many, many clothes. Uh, what you wear today, uh, tomorrow you will change. Some of you actually go home and change your clothes uh, when you get home. And then in the evening, you probably have an event and you wear something else. And tomorrow morning, you wear something else. And tomorrow evening, you may wear something else. In the days of Jesus, people didn't change clothes like we do now. About 2,000 years ago, mostly you wore the same clothes for a very long time. And so if you had clothes and you, 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 you have clothes, you wear them and you wear them till it gets worn out. 
You wear it in the morning, afternoon, evening, next day, morning, afternoon, evening, next week, next month. Most times people wear the same clothes for about a year, sometimes for more than a year. And then when the cloth is worn out, then you get new one and start wearing that too and wear it out. So people didn't have change of clothes. Having a change of clothes was a luxury. Only a few people had it, the very rich. But the normal people had only one garment. So Jesus is using that to talk about, to answer the question. And he says no one uh, would take uh, a new garment and, and patch an old with it. So the first thing he talks about is an old garment. Everybody say old garment. Now the garment he has in mind is an outer garment like my third piece here. So he says no one is going to take an old one of this. Why? Because it's worn out. Now what did Jesus mean by an old garment? By an old garment, Jesus is talking about the traditions of the old life. The traditions of the people. The traditions especially of the Old Testament that the Pharisees have messed up. The Pharisees have complicated the Old Testament, the laws, uh, and they've made it into what Jesus calls the traditions of men. That is what he calls the old garment. Because remember, the question is, why do the Pharisees fast and your disciples don't fast? So he says, there is an old garment. And he's referring to the way of the Pharisees. It's an old way. It's an old traditional way. So that's the old garment. Then the second thing Jesus talks about is the new garment. The new garment is fresh, is strong. So as I said, normally once a year, people will get a new garment. And they will put away the old and wear the new till it also becomes old. So Jesus talks about a new garment. What did the new garment represent? The new garment represents the new life that Jesus Christ has brought to the people. The new Christian life, Christ's way of life. So, whereas the old garment represents the traditions of the people, the new garment represents the way of Christ. The way of Christ. I want you to have this in mind and see how Jesus is using this parable to teach about how to manage the old or the new things that we've received. So, in the days of Jesus, because people wore their clothes for a very long time, most people had what we will call today tattered clothes. Because invariably, if you wear the same clothes for a long time, it's going to get torn. And when it gets torn, you will patch it. Much like how, I don't know whether people still do that now, but we used to patch a lot of clothes. When, in my day, when we were young, we had the Oya uh, the clothes mender who would carry his sewing machine and go through the uh, neighborhood and announce his presence, and people would bring their old garments and, and so they will take a piece and mend it here and mend it there and mend it there because you had to mend. Now, most of you don't mend your clothes. If it's on, you throw it away, buy a new one because we are all rich people. <laughs> Is that not so? All right. But, but you know, for, for people who in Jesus' day, that's not what they did. So when you see people's clothes, it will be a patchwork because they've been wearing it for one year. It's torn here, get some garment and fix it here. And then torn there, get a garment, fix it there. And, and so on and so forth. So, so Jesus is saying, when you have an old garment and the old garment is torn and you receive a new garment, he says you don't take the new garment, cut the new garment and use the fabric of the new garment to go and patch the old. So Jesus is saying no one does that. Why is he saying no one does that? He says it doesn't make sense. And the reason he says no one does that is the people understand. Nobody in their right mind is going to take an old, a new garment they've just received and cut it, take a piece from the old garment, from the new garment, and go and patch the old garment that is worn out. 
That's what Jesus is saying. So basically what Jesus is saying is, you don't tear up the new to patch up the old. You don't tear up the new to patch up the old. That's a major lesson. Your garment is worn out. The tradition is worn out. The old way of life is worn out. It's not beneficial. It's not serving you any good purpose. Now God blesses you with something new, new information, new life, new experience. And what you do is you take the new experience and try to apply it to the old discredited way. And he says, no one does that. So what Jesus is telling them is, you want me to take the new life I have and use it to live your pharisaical life. And I'm not going to take the new I have and apply it to the old way. And that is the wisdom Jesus teaches us today. You don't take from the new to patch up the old. And he says if you do that, two things will happen. First, he says there will be a big tear. It's going to ruin everything. Everything is going to be ruined. The old garment will be ruined and the new garment will be ruined. Why is Jesus saying that? Because if I have the new garment, which is not torn, it's not weak, it is good, it is fresh, but I go and cut it and take a piece from that new garment, I have created a tear in the new garment which doesn't have to have a tear. Then I go and patch the old tear in the old garment and he says it's not even going to work because the new garment is made of fabric that has not shrunk. These days, you know, we have more synthetic uh, fabric, but those days when most of us wore cotton and everything was cotton, especially I remember when we were in secondary school, we wear khaki, khaki trousers. You know, they sew the first khaki trouser for you and the length is fine. And it hits your shoe in those days when we used to wear bell-bottom trousers. It actually sweeps the road. All right. So the first day, it looks like, wow, my trouser fits. But then the first day you wash that trouser, it shoots up. And all of a sudden you realize it's not as long as I thought it was. So what, that's what happens to the new fabric. If you patch it to the old, the next time you go to the river and wash, the new fabric is going to shrink. And he says when it does, then the old tear in the old fabric will be worse off. So he says it's not going to help, it's not going to build, so don't do it. Not only is it going to tear, he says it doesn't even match. It doesn't match because one is brand new and the other is brand old. All right, so it's not even going to match. So that's what Jesus is saying. Now we have to get that at the back of our minds. And then we can now see how this applies. What is the lesson Jesus is teaching? What is he teaching us? Let's say a person is a Christian. You're born again. Before you were born again, let's say you, were, you have your drinking bodies. And you go to drink with them, get drunk. That's normal life for you. And then you get born again. And you receive the, a new life in Christ. And you sober up. So you don't drink again. So now you have a new fabric. You have a new garment. You have a new life. Then you go to meet your old friends. And they say, oh, Charlie, let's, let's go and drink. And let's do all of these things. You say... Oh, I don't drink any longer. And they say, oh, you're boring these days. You're boring. You know, there's no fun. Your life is no fun again. So you decide, okay, you know, I, I, I can't be boring. I, I have to be sociable. I can't be anti, so I have to be nice. So I'm going to take part of my new life, and I'm going to try to fit into this old life. What you're doing is you're cutting your new fabric, and you're going to patch a hole in the old life that God has delivered you out of. When that happens, Jesus says, there's going to be a bigger tear. First, you're going to lose the new life. 
and the people you're trying to please, they're not going to be excited about you because it won't match. Are you, are you getting what Jesus is saying? He says, when I do something new for you, don't try to compromise it. Don't try to let it blend with the new, uh, with the old, because I took you from the old to give you the new. Don't take the new I've given you and take it back to the old. And it has serious application for life. Because you know, sometimes God can give you a new life. A lot of Christians have it. You have new life, you are born again. You know Jesus is Lord. There is no God like Jehovah. We've been singing. Even in Ever, we are singing it. There's no God like our God. Then one day, there is uh, something in your family. And they say, well, according to the family, you have to go and pour some libation and call on the ancestors and do all of that. And you say, well, I'm a Christian. I only worship God. They say, well, but this is our way. It's the old way. It's the way of the fathers. It's the old garment. What are you going to do? You're going to take part of your new garment and cut it and try to appease the old. And Jesus says, when you do that, your life is ruined. The Christian life is not about taking the new things that God has given to us and compromising with the old things that we used to have. When God delivers you from something, he doesn't want you to go back into that same place. When God gives you a new life, he wants you to use the new life fully and to his glory. That's at the spiritual level. But sometimes even at the natural level, let's say you're married. Marriage is having problems. And every time you know you and your husband or you and your wife start talking, in minute six or minute seven, there'll be an argument. And it's going to be a bad one. And, and, and it's so, so it, it happens. That's your old garment. You just know we're going to fight. Some of you go home, you know that it, within 15 minutes, there'll be a quarrel. <laughs> that's the old garment. That's your old way. Then you go for a marriage seminar or a marriage counseling, and you go and get new garment, new ways of addressing conflict in marriage. And you are so excited, oh God, now I know how to solve marriage problems. Then you go back home and minute seven comes in the conversation. And somehow, instead of allowing the new knowledge to now drive what you're doing, you're now trying to find how to still do the old thing with the new knowledge that you have received. And in the end, every knowledge, every seminar, everything you've learned is wasted because you didn't know that when God gives you a new garment, you don't use it to patch an old one. All right? Now, greater works, we got new garments. You're going to go to the old world. You have to determine, am I going to still try to go back to the old life, or I'm going to wear my new garment and walk in the victory that Christ has given to me. And it has wide application. You know, I believe one of the reasons why development is very difficult for Africa, the answer is in this parable. You know, sometimes people are so, the leaders of this country, don't they travel, they travel. Don't they see, they see. Don't they go to school, they go. Don't they read books, they read books. All of us do. But the moment we come back. Everything new is challenged by the old. And somehow we're trying to figure out, should I wear my new garment or should I try and make it work somehow with the old way? And before we realize, every seminar we were attended, workshop, knowledge, degree, PhD, whatever we learn, is making no difference in anything in our lives because we are doing what the Pharisees wanted the disciples of Jesus to do. You have a new life, but use it to live the old life. And Jesus says, no one does that. If God has given you something new, use the new. So what must we do with the new? First, we must do something new with the new. When God gives you a new life, you must do new things with it. Do something new with the new. In the case of the parable, if it's a new garment, 
Then let it lead you into a new lifestyle. Do something new with a new. You know, there are people who can't wear new garments. When I was a kid, I never received new garments anyway, most of the time, because I was a third boy. And that's one of the hazards of being a third boy in our part of the world. Everything you receive goes through three generations. <laughs> the oldest brother wears it, the second one wears it, then it comes to you. By the time it gets to me, it's gone through three generations. My shoes are three generational. When I was going to secondary school, my trunk, generational. Chop box, generational. Shoe, generational. Shirts, generational. Because my brothers have been ahead of me and they pass it on what they don't like. So I got used to using old things. And something about using the old things is that it makes you old. I remember when I first started working and I, I, I would buy a new shirt. I remember so well. I bought three shirts, brand new. Couldn't wear them. They were gar new garments. Couldn't wear them. I kept them down. I, need, I needed it to become old. <laughs> Before I could wear it. Because my psychology says, if it's an old garment, it doesn't fit me. I'm an old, I'm, it's a new garment, it doesn't fit me because I'm an old garment person. And that is why some of us can sit under the greatest knowledge and still go back and do the same. Somebody can live, have a PhD, live outside, be exposed to the greatest knowledge come to Ghana, go to the village, accept a village title to be a chief, and settle to an old life of his ancestors, and not be able to bring any new knowledge to the old. Because we don't know how to use the new thing. But if you're going to take what Jesus says, then do something new with the new. If it's new, live a new life with it. Do something new with it. That's what we did when we were building this auditorium. Nothing here reminds us of the old place we have because this is a new garment. We're not trying to live at Christ Temple West, at Christ Temple East. And some of you still have nostalgia. Oh, I like the old place and I like it because, you know, when you, you have, <laughs> you are like me, you are like me, you are old. The new makes you very uncomfortable. Some of you can't even adjust to the new, the way we worship. You say, oh, I just want, you know, I am for any, as a to the woman. It's the old way. It's the old way. And in part two, I'm going to touch more on this. It's the old way. It's the old way. But God gives you a new garment. When God gives you something new, have to do something new with it. That's the first thing. We do something new with the new. Second thing, we must join the new with the new. If you're going to patch, patch a new garment onto a new garment. If you're going to join, join the new with the new. If you're going to be a new person, network with people who are new, not people who are old. When the angel of the Lord spoke to Mary and gave her that momentous message about the child to be conceived by her, the angel pointed her to another woman who has received another momentous message, Elizabeth, and the two of them had to network because they were the only two women who understood this new thing that God was doing. Because sometimes when God is doing a new thing with you and you bunch up with old people, the old garment will swallow up your new. Look for people who are going where you are going, thinking as you are thinking, desiring what you are desiring, seeking what you are seeking for. That's why the kind of church you attend is so significant as to the journey of your life. 
If you go to a place where somebody tells you there is, a, there is a witch following you, there are demons following you, you have to come for 21 days prayer to cast out demons from your life, your life is always going to be backwards because you're always trying to correct the problems of your grandfather and not the problems of today and the future. The knowledge you receive must reinforce the new thing in your life. If you have received a new life, but the knowledge you're receiving is old, then the new life will not manifest itself. You have to join the new with the new. And third and finally, we must keep the new new. Keep the new thing new. If it is new, keep it new. Don't try to take the new thing that God has given to you and try to make it old. And for each one of us, there will be moments of newness in our lives. The reason why sometimes it doesn't last is we do what Jesus says we must not do. We take the new and we want to let it live in the old. And nothing good comes out of it. Have you noticed that sometimes the people you want to please never get pleased? If you're a Christian, you went to that party, you stopped drinking and they persuaded you and you say, you, you drink and then you start coughing, quote, 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 quote. Then get drunk and now you're talking foolishness at the party. Then they will say, oh, so full, oh, so full. Oh, so. You know? <laughs> they make fun of you because your drinking doesn't please them. It doesn't impress them. It just shows them you are fake. You are fake. All that you've been talking about is fake because you couldn't stand when pressure was brought on you. Don't take the new garment. Cut it up and try to patch an old life. There are some people you cannot please. Don't try to please them. There are people God has taken out of your life. Don't try to pacify them. They are gone and they are gone. And God is doing a new thing in your life. Don't live life always looking backwards. What do they think? What about me? Oh, I have to make sure that nobody gets upset with you. Somebody is going to get upset with you. But God has brought you into a new life. Somebody say, I have a new life. And I'm going to live the new life. That's what God wants us to. Every new thing that you've received, make it work in your life. Don't go back to the old garment. Don't try to do patch, patch work with the new thing that God has given to you. It's a new life, it's an abundant life, and it's a great life. Before we close this morning, if you are here and you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart, you're not born again, the way to have new life in Christ is to receive Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and personal Savior. And I'm going to give you the chance to make that very, very important life-changing decision to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Let's bow down our heads. And if you're here, you say, Pastor, I want new life in Christ. I want Christ to change my life. I want to be born again. I want my sins to be forgiven. If that's your prayer, with every head bowed, just lift up your hand as a sign of readiness to live for Christ. Just lift up your right hand, wherever you are. Lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. And those of you who lifted up your hand, put your hand upon your heart, upon your chest. And let's pray this prayer together. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I come to you today just as I am. I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. I ask you, Father, save me through Christ Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Give me new life. And help me to live the new life to your glory. I thank you, Father, for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening to Living Word. 